Happy Earth Day! I am here on my porch and um, it is April 19th, 2020, Earth Day, and usually I'm in the town square in Leonardtown, but since we can't be there live with you, I wanted to do a recording and give you some kind of art project to try at home for kids. So instead of doing some kind of recycle project or found object project, we're actually gonna try to draw a tree and we're going to use natural dyes. We're gonna use dyes that I have of things in my kitchen. So why don't you come a little bit closer and take a look at what I've got here. I have made some dyes from liquids in my kitchen. First I have some brewed coffee right here, some instant coffee, some green tea, and some hibiscus tea. Okay, so we have a nice range of warm colors and I'm using, I'm reusing my um, yogurt containers so that I am not um, buying anything new here. And I'm using some watercolor paper right here. So on the side of my watercolor paper, I'm gonna give you um, a sense of what these colors look like and what they can do. Here's the coffee, the brewed coffee. Beautiful brown color. Um, when you first put it on, it's gonna be a little bit darker than when it dries. And you might want to have a paper towel handy. I know they are in scarce supply right now, but so that you don't have any drips on your paper. But it's got a nice um, wash to it, a nice uh, sort of soft brown wash. And the instant coffee looks like it's a tiny bit darker. Yes, it is. Look at that. It's pretty cool. Very cool, right? So that's a tiny bit darker. We're gonna let that dry for a second. I'm gonna wash my brush out. The green tea, I bet that's gonna be even lighter. Look at that, it's beautiful, very light ivory color. And the hibiscus is a little bit reddish, a little bit pinkish. Now, if you wanted a nice, really dark black color, you could use a brown walnut ink um, and that might give you a nice um, dark black color um, but for now I'm gonna use what I have available to me um, in my own kitchen okay and so with those dyes I am going to make a wash and I'm gonna do a drawing of this tree and it looks like we have a storm coming I don't know if you can see the sky so the sky is actually quite beautiful and I better work pretty quickly because I think I'm going to run out of time here. So I am going to make a rectangle on my page. And if you've watched some of my classes on the yellowline.co on YouTube, you've seen that making a rectangle helps you kind of measure, uh, freehand measure what you're looking at. And I want that whole tree to be on my page. So I'm gonna use my pencil and I'm gonna measure with my pencil how big that tree is. So one, two and a half pencils to get that whole tree. So I'm gonna do a half a pencil, one, two and a half. So this is gonna be the top of my tree and this is gonna be the bottom of my tree. And I'm just gonna, there's lots of different ways to draw a tree. But what I'm doing is I'm kind of sketching the tree in. Fairly quickly because when you're outside drawing and painting, you might have to hurry up because the weather could get bad. Oh boy. And I've got a brave Miss Georgia out here with me too. So here's that little house, little uh, shed. shed, thank you. What is that called, Georgia? It's called a shed.
just giving myself some, oh boy, we better hurry, Georgia. We gotta get this down. We can take it inside if we need to. You never know what to expect from mother nature, right? Nope. I wanna get that swing in there though. See the swing? Okay, so I've laid the groundwork for my drawing. Ooh, I see it's raining over there. It is. Okay, we're, we're gonna stop and we're gonna move this inside. Hi there, so we had a massive storm outside and we barely made it inside and I am in my inside studio right now. We're gonna continue this drawing using a photograph of what I was looking at and our natural dyes. And I'm gonna show you how to use a stick as a tool. Okay, so I have here my drawing that I started outside. I have a black and white photo of the, the image of the tree that I was looking at. And I do have my computer on for a reference in terms of color, but I can start with the black and, uh, black and white image and uh, just simply try to get the um, bend of the tree a little bit more with my pencil and my kneaded eraser. So I'm going to erase what I had there because it's a little bit more of a bend and arch with the tree. Something more like that and it goes up to meet the corner of my paper. And then these background, um, you know, uh, branches that are farther away I'm actually just making them lighter and a little bit smaller on my page. Because we know when we look outside at the natural world, it's pretty complex. There's a lot of stuff going on out there. And so as an artist, we kind of have to simplify what we're seeing in order to make, to organize it or design it in a way for everyone to kind of see it and be able to comprehend the image. And if you're, you know, six years old, you don't have to get it in this much detail. You can just kind of take it one step at a time. And if you're a little bit older, you could try to get a little bit more detail. But you can see I'm not trying to get anything perfect. I'm just trying to get a sense of where things are on the page and how I can use my page. There. All right, so I think I have the full image that I wanna use. And I'm gonna start with, since I have a very limited palette, I am going to not draw, not paint exactly what I see, because I have pink, I have this pink hibiscus color, so I'm gonna use that for the ground. Just like there are in the trees back there, there's a little bit of pinkish light coming through. And then for some of these trees, I think I'm gonna have to go for a heavier color, this walnut, um, this darker walnut looking color from the instant coffee is what I'm using. That's my best dye that I have here today, plus the pink. I'm 
So you can see I'm not outlining, I'm not sticking to a shape, just kind of giving the sense that there's light falling on the trees, through the trees. and my eye gets to enjoy all that light. Now, I'm gonna need a darker, um, a little bit of a darker ink. So I'm gonna have to find my darker ink. All right, so I found some black walnut ink, and I'm going to show you, this is drying just a little bit. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna use this darker ink with my stick. But first, let me just get a little bit of color up here. that whole thing to be dry and if I had a um, paper towel that would be good but the air is kind of the vent is kind of, of blowing right now so okay so I'm gonna take my so it's drying a little bit I'm gonna take my black walnut ink which you can see is a lot darker and I'm gonna dip my um, my stick in there thank you so much so if you want, you can kind of just do this, give it a little texture, dry it out so you can go to the next step without waiting for it to dry fully. Okay. All right, so I'm still using my picture as a reference and I'm going to kind of redraw the tree with this stick and this black walnut ink. I say black because I took the walnut ink and I added just a little smidge of black paint to it to make it a little bit darker. And my brush that I was using was a bamboo brush. I think I forgot to mention that. A natural bamboo brush with natural bristles and the wood bamboo handle. It's a nice way to have a broken line in a drawing. And also to have a line that's not so um, even, which is really more what we see out in nature, isn't it? you hear a noise, that's our bunny. She, she really bunny. wanted to go outside today, but it's raining really badly, so we can't go outside. <laughs> it might have, it's that kind of day. Ooh, now with this kind of medium, you've gotta move quickly and you gotta take some chances. Like I just took a chance there and it was probably a little bold on my part. Um, I'm gonna try to soak that up a little bit. So for all of you kids out there on Earth Day, just know that the natural world is full of subject matter for you to look at and also tools for you to use. So if you don't have an, uh, an art, an expensive art tool or pen, you can always go outside and find a stick 
And if you've got some black paint, you can just water it down or you can try to find something in your kitchen that might work as a substitute or a dye for your drawing. I have a question. Yes. Would you use like lemonade? Uh, lemonade, I don't think lemonade would really dye the paper very much. But I do think, um, like Kool-Aid would. Okay. Yeah. That's not necessarily good for the environment because it's got a lot of um, food coloring. These are all things that you're going to normally find, you know, like teas and coffees and stuff. But, um, but yeah. Now, something that's kind of hard to draw are the leaves on the trees. But you can kind of just make little marks with your stick and see what happens when you try to depict those trees. This is a little bit darker down here, I think. And I'm about to run out of ink. So I better really make sure all those lines that I put down are really needed. I want to anchor the bottom of my composition too. So this is my backyard with the swing and the tree using instant coffee, hibiscus tea, green tea, and a little bit of walnut ink with some a little tiny bit of black um, acrylic added to it just to give it a little bit more contrast. But I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. And I hope you enjoy Earth Day 2020. I'm going to sign my name here. Happy Earth Day, Leonard Town. Voila. And if you want to take more art classes, you can look me up at carriepatterson.com or you can go to theyellowline.co if you want to take art classes at home. See you later.